Welcome back. So I wanted to post a quick video here in order to show how to render this grass because there's a lot of requests. And so I figured I would just do this really fast um, to show a little bit of process of how I would go about getting the grass rendered. Now, just to caveat this with these tutorials, I'm not trying to show every single step because I do want to hopefully teach principles of this is what you could do, give you ideas, and then let you kind of experiment to figure out how you can make it your own shot because it won't do you any good just to copy tutorials and, and post things. And I'm not trying to say that that's what you're trying to do. Sometimes you just need help. But that being said, let's dive in. So we had this little patch set up from the first part of this tutorial. And because I had set up this attribute bot that has this bias, we can, like I said earlier, continue to replicate that. So real quick here with this color node, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this cog and I'm going to go to edit parameter interface. Now, when I come here, it allows me to add extra icons or extra tools to um, a node here. So I'm going to gra grab this color, drop it down here and I'll call it color and just name it C, for example, and I'll hit apply and accept. So now we have a color node. And if I right click here and I copy parameter and then right click again and then paste relative references, it's now referencing each one of these values. Now, the reason I did that is because now I have a color wheel. So it makes it a lot easier to select color. So maybe we'll make this like a little bit of a yellowish look, okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate the setup again, plug in this input here, and we see it's not really changing it because our noise setup in this bias node is the same. So if we alter this bias, maybe change the frequency a little bit, then we start to see, um, and I can plug in the color here real quick. We start to see that we have I'll just turn this on here. We have a little bit different of a frequency going on here. So I'm going to make sure I disconnect that. Oh, by the way, we don't need to be exporting another P scale, so I'm gonna disconnect that as well. We only want a bias attribute. So now if we slightly change this color, we see we get another third color. So um, maybe we want like a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for like a more brownish grass. Maybe that's too brown there. Um, maybe it's too white. So it, honestly, it just, you wanna just dial in different values of what you think looks good. Um, look at different reference of what kind of grass you wanna make. Maybe this has some, some lively spots, but for the most part, it's some dead grass. And again, you could repeat this several times. So maybe I'll do it one more time. And this time I'll change the noise on this bias, plug in the color real quick so I can see how my noise is looking. Um, maybe I'll make this frequency really big right there. So maybe we get a few uh, patches of dark here. So I'll jump back here. And just to visualize this a little bit better, I'll make it red. And I'm actually going to flip these colors. So I'm going to delete that here and put in that CD there. Um, Yeah, I was like, why was that white? Because I forgot to disconnect my color there. So now coming back here, instead of having that red, let's let's do um, darker green. Okay, sweet. So I think the variation of color is about where I want it to be. Okay, so now for a final little tweak, and I did mention this in the comments, but I'm just gonna show you real quick. Um, we can drop down another point bop because if you look at this grass, it is bent, it is going in different directions, the scale is varied, but even to bring up the realism just a little bit more, what I'm going to do is apply, apply an additional noise to the whole bed of grass in order to really make it varied and um, look a lot better. So if we jump down here, why don't we just drop down a, let's say a turbulent noise, we can plug that in the position. We're going to take the position of this grass and add the noise to it and export out that position again. And we see we get this janky grass here. Now the reason that's happening is because it's adding noise to the whole setup. If we turn the ampl amplitude down to zero, then that doesn't happen. And we can uh, middle mouse button click and kind of hold this down and kind of up the amplitude. But the problem is still, even if I do that slightly, the grass is moving from its original position at the root level, but we don't want that to happen. So in order to counteract that, if we go way back up here where we had bent to the original blades of grass, we can drop down a resample node. And we see before we had like Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, about six points. So I'm gonna resample this to make sure we only have um, about, yeah, six points again. And this time I'm going to export a curve view attribute. Now what this curve view attribute does, if I click on the eye here, click on curve view, it's now created a visualizer tab in here, see curve view. Um, if we click on here, this curve view, I'm going to just look at the min and the max from zero to one. So any values of zero are going to be blue and any values going to one are going to be red. So we see that it's just created this curve view attribute that's a float value from zero all the way to one along the curve. And that's super useful because now if we go through our entire setup all the way down to here, uncheck the points here, we see that this curve view attribute is on all the blades of grass. So I'm gonna um, dive into my noise here. And if I drop down a bind, I'm going to import that curve view, oops, spelled it wrong, curve view attribute. And I'm going to multiply the noise before it goes into the add first. Also, this noise should be 3D noise. Um, I'm going to multiply the curve view attribute by the noise, and then we're going to add it to the position. So we see from here, no matter what we do to the noise, at least those roots stay there. Now, of course, we don't want this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it an amplitude of one for now, but this frequency is pretty low, meaning it's got low strides of different noises. So I'm gonna copy parameter, paste relative references, 
base relative references here. So I can just adjust this one. I'm going to jump it up to a factor of 10. Now, that probably looks better, but our amplitude is too high. So let's drop that down by 10. So we can see here, I'm going to turn off this curvy visualizer. We can see here, now we're getting some grass that looks like it was affected by wind in some way. Um, why don't we up the frequency up to 20? So again, yeah, now we have a little bit more scraggly grass. Looks a little bit more organic. And maybe I'll drop the amplitude down by half. So now if we jump out of here, we can turn that on and off. We see it gives a little, a little nice touch to our grass. So I think that's good there, and we should be ready to render. So we're ready to render. What I want to do is show you how I rendered it in Redshift, which is a third-party renderer, if you're not familiar with that. So I'm not going to be showing how to do it necessarily in Mantra, but it's pretty simple to figure out how you do it in Mantra by how I'm showing you in Redshift. So what I'm going to do, drop down the material node right here. And on this side, the reason why I like to have two panels open is because then I can do multiple things and kind of drag and drop. So I'm going to drop down a RS material builder, and I'm going to call this my grass. And again, if you were rendering in Redshift, uh, in Mantra, you could just drop down a principal shader and do the same thing, change um, change any roughness that we're going to do here in this grass shader and plug in your point color um, because that's what we're going to do here in the grass. So here in the grass, let me drag it on here to this material so that material is set. But dive inside here, I'm going to drop down a RS material, going to plug it into the surface here. And then this base properties, we need a color. And since we've already made some wonderful colors here on our grass, what I'm going to do is drop down an RS point attribute. And I'm going to say, hey, look at the color. And I'm going to plug it in here to the color. And then the roughness on the shader is set to zero, so it's going to be pretty specular. And I'm just going to crank that up to one. So there's no specular reflection. reflection and we're done there. Um, I'm going to drop down. I'm going to duplicate that. I, I held down Alt and left clicked to duplicate that. I'm going to call this dirt. And I'm going to just delete that. And we're going to change our dirt here to like this, this dark brown. And what I'm going to do is grab these two nodes here at the top, copy that, jump out of here, drop down a geometry node, paste that there. And I'm going to change the size maybe to three and change the rows and columns to 300. Okay. And drop down a material node here. And I'm going to drop the dirt there. So now we've got our dirt and we've got our grass. So we've got our two elements that we're going to render with. Now I'm not going to go over any dirt or anything like that. Um, in this tutorial here because we're just focusing on the grass. So I've got my grass here ready to render. What do we need? We need a basic camera. So if I hold down control and just click the camera here, it will create a camera based on where my viewport is looking. So I'm going to bring that out there. Same thing with lights. In this redshift tab that I have, I'm going to create a redshift light. So an RS light, I'm going to hold down control, click that. And so now we are in this RS light. I'm going to hit the lock here in order to move my light just a little bit. We're going to call this our key light. And then I'm going to hit tab, RS light dome. This will be our environment light. And so we've got two lights, basic setup, go back in our camera view, we should be good to render. So if I jump into our render land, I'm going to drop down a Redshift custom shader. And again, if you're rendering a mantra, you just drop down a mantra node. Um, here in Redshift, I'm going to just hit render, render to end play, see what happens. Okay, and we see we do have our dirt showing up there, but our grass is not there. Why is it not there? Well, Redshift particularly, the renderer, it needs to have a special item checked in order to render lines like these curves. So I'm going to go into the Redshift object tab, go to strands, and hit render as object strands. I'm going to ignore the p-scale attribute. I'm going to change the default size to 0 0.01. And now we'll hit render. And voila, we've got a grass showing up with its color. As we can see, it's looking okay. We can see though that the grass has like some parts where it doesn't look like a perfect curve. It's kind of bent in a, I don't know, paper wrappery type way. So what you could do so go down here into your grass, drop down another resample here. And since this is a final render, just resample that to like 0 0.05 is the length. So it essentially just gives them a lot more points. And then change the polygon type to subdivision as curve. So then it gives it a nice curve. Jump out here, hit render again. And um, problem there. Got to hit my material. Hit render again. There we go. Grass is looking a lot better. It is looking a little thick. So we could even change the default scale to half that. Um, render again, and bam, it's looking a little bit thinner. Um, so there you have it. Um, that's a basic way to set up the render. I know this isn't looking perfect. There's obviously things you want to change in the variation of the colors. Maybe you want to go back and edit it, but at least it gives you a setup to go off of where you have a lot of power to manipulate the grass you, uh, the way you want it. So if you liked that, give it a like. Um, if you have any requests for anything else or any comments, just let me know below. Um, share it if you'd like, and I guess uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.